It's been a good day to be in the house of the Lord. What a what a blessed song service tonight, and uh, uh, I'm grateful for it. Um, He's not here tonight. Uh, how many of y'all this morning noticed little Ricky Myers with his necktie on? Did that, yeah, how many of y'all noticed that? I was talking to Tim this morning, and Jen told me this morning that said when she got up this morning, he was already dressed, said his teeth were brushed, and he was ready to go to church. They just got saved a couple of weeks ago. And they said on Halloween, those boys were out there giving out gospel tracts to all the kids coming around the neighborhood. How many of y'all gave out gospel tracts on Halloween? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And we think about those kids and all of the kids and, and uh, man, if we had some of their enthusiasm sometime. If we had some of their enthusiasm, we'd probably fall down and hurt ourselves. <laughs> uh, it's great to be a Christian. I want to pick up uh, tonight, and I'll try to finish. I'll try to go quickly tonight. And uh, But we were talking about uh, this morning how to act um, in the days in which we live, the things that we should be doing. And folks, it really doesn't matter what the atmosphere, what the climate of the day is, what the temperature of the day is. Uh, our, our response, I, it should be the same, no matter what it is. Uh, but the Bible over and over again, and I read you several passages this morning where it talks about, you know, be strong, be of a good courage be not afraid don't be dismayed the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest be strong and of a good courage quit you like men act like men and uh, uh, let's play the uh, play the men for our people and see what God made let's just stand up and serve the Lord and and so it was going through and we were giving you uh, some things that we should be doing and just a real quick review. The first thing we said was you should make sure that you're saved uh, in the day in which... Hey, listen, folks. That's the most important decision that you'll ever make in your life is whether you'll trust Jesus Christ or reject Him. It will determine your eternal destination. And so, in these days, make sure you know the Lord. Don't be surprised at the growing wickedness and apostasy of our day. We talked about not fretting this morning. No need for us to fret. Uh, the wicked are going to be cut off. The workers of iniquity will be cut down like the grass. They'll wither as the green herb. Listen, folks, there's, a, there's an end to wickedness, and it's coming. Uh, we talked about having Bible convictions uh, that God is on the throne and that my times are in his hands. We talked about being mature and skillful uh, Bible students and uh, study to show thyself approve a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Uh, we talked about being spiritually discerning and testing everything, folks, everything by the word of God. And everything means everything. What we say, where we go, what we watch, what we wear, what we listen to, everything ought to be run through the prism of God's Word. And uh, I'll tell you, if we do that, folks, it'll change our life. We'll not be the same if we test everything by the Word of God. Uh, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Imaginations are, uh, where do imaginations come from? They're the images and things that are conjured up in our mind. The, uh, imaginations, casting down 
imagination and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, bringing it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Folks, that's a mouthful right there. Casting down all imaginations, bringing every thought unto the obedience of Christ. How many thoughts? Every one of them. Run everything through the word of God. And then we talked about um, focusing on our heavenly citizenship. Uh, listen, folks, the, uh, aren't you glad that this isn't the final resting place? Oh, look at folks. You think about the glories of heaven and, and the Bible describes it. I tell you, I don't have the vocabulary. I can read what the Bible says, but uh, the, 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 the glory, the splendor of what heaven must be and streets of gold and, and the, all the emeralds and the, the jewels, the precious stones, the, the gates of pearl. And, and every time I, I think about gates of pearl, I, and I know I've, I've said this so many times, but I, I think about the size of that oyster <laughs> to make a, 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 a pearl big enough for a gate. It doesn't say gates of pearls, it says pearl. And um, my goodness, I love oysters. I love oyster soup. And uh, <laughs> uh, mm, 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 mm. but anyway, <laughs> you, you just gotta excuse my mind. Sometimes it does crazy things. I wonder if we're gonna eat oyster stew when we get to heaven. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so anyway, those same. Uh, focus on that heavenly citizenship. Uh, we got another place to go to, folks. Um, and it's going to be great. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. For Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. And so in these days in which we live, folks, uh, listen, for the child of God, it just... It, the worst we're ever going to have it is in this life. It only gets better in the next. But you think about the wicked. You think about the unsaved. The best, the very best that they'll ever have is in this life. And then in the life after. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Live as citizens and live as pilgrims in this world. That's what we are. And so we'll pick up right there. I'll give you another one. And I think this is uh, probably number eight. Uh, we ought to live holy Christian lives to the glory of Jesus Christ. This, folks, everything that we do ought to be to the glory of God, to the glory of Jesus Christ. Folks, we owe him everything as his people. The Bible says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. You see, folks, salvation took place uh, in a moment, in an instant. Salvation took place. But we're being saved every day. We're being delivered every day from this evil, wicked world. Now is salvation nearer than when we believed. Listen, folks, the day is drawing nigh, the Bible talks about. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Well, that's a lot, isn't it? Listen, live holy lives. Make no provision for the, fe for the flesh. I'm going to tell you what, folks. Uh, this flesh wants to be fed. And the Bible says don't make provision for the flesh. I, I, I got to... I got to tell you, folks, when I was down in, in North Carolina, I made provision for the flesh. I went to a restaurant, 
and they had what was called the Tower Burger. And I kid you not, this thing was this high. And I ate one of them. <laughs> had two big, thick hamburger patties on it. Had lettuce, tomato. It had, um, it had onion rings on it. It had fried pickles on it. Listen to me. It had, um, it had deep fried bacon on that thing. I'm not talking about bacon. I'm talking about deep fried bacon. <laughs> this thing was a monster. Um, I, I'm, and I'm still working on getting rid of it. I, I'll be out running tomorrow trying to. Um, and we laugh and, you know, and. But folks, there, there are things that we make provision for the flesh for that as Christians we should not do. We should not do. That you walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and longsuffering and joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Listen, folks, it's still right to live a holy life in this wicked world in which we live in. And I, look, I don't care what the rest of the world is doing. I don't care what people are doing in other churches. I don't care what people are doing in other denominations. The Bible tells us to make no provision for the, the, the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Be ye holy, the scripture says, for I am holy. And it's still right to live holy Christian lives to the glory of Jesus Christ. See, we talked about doing everything for him. Here's another thing that we should be doing, folks. We should be building real New Testament churches. That's important. You know, I, I, it just seems like today churches, it's not the most important thing. If we come, we do. If we don't, we don't. You know, uh, but folks, the church is of God. He created it. He invented it. And he told us to be part of it. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15, he says, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know thou, how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. Folks, why is truth important? Why is church important? Because God said it's the pillar and ground of truth. God has committed to us the truth of his word. Don't compromise it. Don't back off on it. The church, the pillar and ground of truth. The Bible says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Listen, when they got saved, they were added to the church. Become functioning members. They were baptized. They partook of the Lord's Supper. Uh, we need... New Testament churches today. We need to build New Testament churches today. That's part of our mission programs. Our missionaries are out on the field and they're planting churches in all these different places. It's the pillar and ground of truth. Have you ever thought about that, folks, that God committed the truth of his word to the church? And I believe that's why one of the reasons there's a, such an attack on God's word today, there's such an attack on the church today. It's because that's where God has committed the truth to. 
And folks, it's, it's, it's on you, it's on me to, to, uh, to, to pass it on to the next generation. We have no right to change it. Not one little bit. Not one little bit do we have right to change it. We need to build New Testament Christian churches that will be the pillar and ground of truth. Here's another thing that we ought to do in these days in which we live. We ought to build godly Christian homes. Godly Christian homes. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, why, look at what, now there's several things mentioned here. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Boy, he just describes the family there, doesn't he? Wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. And children, obey your parents. And we ought to be busy about building godly Christian homes. Um, I'm glad my responsibility there is over. My children are all gone and grown. They're out and they got their own family. My responsibility ended, right? Wrong. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, it, it don't end. Uh, uh, I'm going to tell you what, folks. These little guys are watching us. A lot of us in here are, are grandparents. How many of you are great-grandparents? couple yeah I hadn't got that old yet but I can't wait to have great grandkids as great as great as great as grandkids are I imagine great grandkids are going to be even better but but we've got a responsibility to live before these kids and teach them right raise them up to give out tracts and and sing praises to God and lift your hands and and, and praise to the Lord and and uh, man, <laughs> the Bible tells us to lift holy hands. And uh, I wonder how many of you have ever lifted a hand in church before. I'm, just don't. I'm just saying, my goodness. Oh, we sung that song tonight. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Man, if I don't get you stirred up, I don't know what will. All of it nailed to the cross. And we, ought to, we ought to raise... Uh, our families in an atmosphere like that. Uh, I think it's the right thing to do. And you knew we would talk about this, folks, but we're to separate from the world. Y'all seen my illustration that I give before, you know, the, 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 the church. You know, we've, we've always been separate from the world. We had the church, we had the world, and the church, we, we didn't want to get in the world, but the world's got worse, hasn't it? Amen. Say Amen. And as it got worse, the church moved. Well, we moved here where the world used to be. We're not in the world, but we're not where we used to be. We're here. And then the world got worse. And it seems like the church moved over here. And things that we wouldn't allow in the church, we wouldn't even think about letting in the church. Now we're doing these things, but we're not in the world. We're not as bad as the world. But we're not where we used to be. And on and on it goes. And it keeps happening, folks. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Come out from among them. Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be the friend of the world is the enemy of God, James 4.4. 4. 
In 1 John chapter 2, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. The world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And so, folks, separation from the world is still a good thing. We ought to be different. The world ought to see us and see a difference in us than in them. And then we ought to be fulfilling the Great Commission. We just had a missions conference. It was all about the Great Commission, taking the gospel to the ends of the world. In Matthew 28, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus gave that command five times in 40 days to go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptize and teach. Folks, in the day in which we live, uh, you hear, well, people just, they're just not interested anymore. And, and I'll tell you folks, you just keep giving the gospel and you're going to find people that are interested. You're going to find people that get saved. Um, and, and, and in the last days, uh, I, I've been challenging you through the weeks here to get those gospel tracts and let's be giving them out. Let's get the gospel out there. And uh, listen, just because the days are rough, just because, um, and, 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 and they are, folks. Listen, uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, even the unsaved had a respect for the church, for the house of God. But it seems like they don't anymore. But that doesn't change the fact that you and I ought to be giving the gospel out, that we ought to be carrying out God's great commission. See, Jesus was here. He died. He bled for us. He rose again that you and I might be saved. He ascended back into the heaven. He sits today on the right hand of the Father, and he's left us here to do his will, and his will is to seek the lost and try to win them for Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. And he said, even uh, as the Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And our job is to go out and fulfill the great commission. And we ought to be doing that today. We ought to be keepers and supporters of law. Now, I'm talking about civil law right here. God's word teaches us to obey man's laws. So long as man's laws don't violate God's law. Now, there's the dividing line. Uh, Paul, when Paul wrote uh, Romans 13, and let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there's no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resist the ordinance of God. When Paul wrote that, he lived in a godless pagan society. Probably a lot like what we live in today, godless and pagan. He said, you ought to obey the laws of the government. I don't like paying taxes. Do you? <laughs> huh? <laughs> you love it. Oh, Rita. <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> Uh, but we ought to do it. I mean, it doesn't violate God's law. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar, and unto God the things that are God's. And, uh, and, and, and just simple thing. Oh, Brother Norman, boy, he used to hit those things. Uh, I miss Brother Norman. I, I, I got a letter from him just the other day. His, his, him and his wife, they're still struggling. And uh, physically, they're, they are not doing the best uh, but brother norman he used to be man if 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 the driver book says that you stop before the white line you shouldn't pull up to the line the law says you stop behind it 
uh, and and he'd get on you know stuff but you can't argue with him he's right that's what the law says and we ought to obey those things as much as we can folks we ought to be keepers of the law and supporters of law enforcement every time i get an opportunity i'm around a policeman or somebody like that i always thank them for their service uh, we were at the parade and uh, we were giving out tracts at the parade and and the policemen were all over the place and every time I got a chance I, I, I appreciate your service thank you for being here keeping us safe today I appreciate you and uh, well, I think we ought to do stuff like that uh, here's another one we ought to endure suffering and persecution um Folks, I, I think for a Christian, that's a, a non-optional principle, is that in this life, we're going to suffer. I uh, was talking to somebody recently, and, and I never can remember who I was talking to, but we were, we were talking about, we talk about the blessing on America today. And folks, truly, God has been good to America uh, we live, in, in, as a church, we live in a, a, a society that's been free to go out and, and, and live for Jesus, preach the gospel, attend church, and all these things. And, and we look at it and we say, boy, God has, has blessed us and he's poured all these material things on us today. Folks, I'm not so sure all the material things are God's blessings. I think all the material things that have come on us today has taken us away from the main purpose God left us here for. And we've got to the point where if we have hard times, if we have sickness or, 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 or adversity comes to our life, we think, what have we done wrong? And the Bible says, yea, and all they that will live godly in Christ Jesus, what? Shall, say it with me, suffer persecution boy I didn't get a lot of uh, <laughs> but we ought not be beloved think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you listen folks difficult times are going to come our way and we ought to endure it we ought to be convinced, like I said in one of my other points, that God is on the throne and my times are in his hands and nothing, nothing comes to me that doesn't first pass through the hand of God. And I got to tell you, folks, I don't understand all of that, but I believe it because that's what the Bible teaches. This idea that if, if you, you're suffering... Uh, physically or uh, there's some sin in your life well it may be but it don't mean that it is you may be just doing right Jesus said let's get in the boat and go over the other side and on the way to the other side what the disciples thought they were going to die they thought they were going to drown in the storm and Jesus was in the boat with them matter of fact they were in the center of God's will they're doing exactly what God told them to do and they thought they'd die And so when times like that come, we ought to endure it in a godly manner for Christ's sake. <clears throat> a couple more. I want to finish and we'll be done. <laughs> Folks, we ought to be spiritually revived and listening for the shout. Keep yourself in the love of Christ. Uh, listen, don't sit around and wait for somebody to revive you. Get in the Word of God. Feed yourself on the Word of God. Be obedient to the Word of God. Listen, folks, that's what revival is. Revival is just being obedient to God's Word. When we're obedient to God's Word, that's what revival is. <laughs> Revive yourself. And listen for the shout. You ever thought what that's going to sound like? The trump of God?
For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. I wonder what that's going to sound like. Yeah. Come on home, kids. Supper's on the table. I don't know. But with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, we've got to be quiet in church, right? <laughs> you ever heard the blast of a trumpet? Wow. It won't be a mistake. You won't mistake it. You'll hear it. And we're going to go to the house. Grits are on the table. The night is far spent. The day is in hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. The day is far spent. The day is at hand. Cast off the works of darkness. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is his hand. In Philippians 4, 5. In 1 Peter chapter 4. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Revive yourself, folks. Listen. <laughs> Listen for the shout. I believe we're going to hear it in our lifetime. Um, I'm not a fan of Martin Luther. He's not one of my heroes of the faith. But he did say this one time. Martin Luther said, um, if I knew the Lord would come tomorrow, I'd still plant my apple tree today. And I thought, well, that's pretty good right there. Just keep serving him. Just keep listening for the trumpet. We're going to hear it one day, I believe. We ought to be a student of Bible prophet, prophecy. Uh, so we'll have a proper worldview and understanding of the times in which we live in. Folks, we need an understanding of the times in which we live in. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Wherein do you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Well, I like the way he puts that. The day star arises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Folks, we need a proper understanding of the end times. And I'm glad we can know it. We talked about this morning just for a few minutes about all of these different countries that are surrounding Israel today. And, and folks, they're all in play. The Bible, you go to Ezekiel chapter 37, chapter 38, and in other passages as well. These places are, they're mentioned. And they're right there. And I believe we're standing on the door. And then we're going to close. What can we do? Well, we can pray. We can pray, we can pray, we can pray. Somebody says, oh my goodness, has it come to that? Yeah, it has. We ought to pray. The Bible says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications and prayers, intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 12, the Bible says, continuing instant in prayer. In Ephesians chapter 6, we're almost there on our Wednesday night study, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. 
in Colossians 4, 2, continuing in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. 1 Peter uh, chapter 3 and verse 12, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And then lastly in 1 Peter 4, 7, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. The end of all things is at hand. What are we supposed to do? Watch and pray. Well, we got a lot we can do, folks, in these days. I've given you 17 things. Take out a sheet of paper and a pencil. We're going to have a test. No, I'm just kidding. Folks, be encouraged. Jesus may come tonight. Wouldn't that be awesome? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.